welcome to my next episode about all Chopin mazurkas. Today we focus on mazurka opus 33, number 4, mazurka in B minor. This mazurka is very special because we know from one of Chopin's students, uh, Lenz, who that this mazurka is not really a mazurka, but it's more like a ballad. In the book uh, written by Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger, uh, the title of the book is Chopin in the Eyes of His Students. I strongly recommend this book. We read, well, I will translate this from Polish, so um, I, I just read you what we can uh, have, what the student of Chopin <coughs> is saying about this mazurka. This is the ballad, although the title is different. Chopin himself uh, thought that we should understand this mazurka in the sense of the ballad, and he underlined the, the character of the ballad, of the telling story. Uh, in this very rich piece with fascinating trio in B major. At the end, we can hear in the bass bells ringing. And after that, the ghost disappears in the last chord. That is what Chopin was saying. So this is <coughs> Chopin's student. What, what it tells to us, first of all, the ballad. So ballad means the story. So the attitude to play this mazurka should be a storytelling. And <coughs> let's start from the beginning. Part A. This is the first part. And immediately from the very first notes we can realize that this is a story. Absolutely we can. And this story, um, well we don't know what this is about because Chopin never wrote anything about this. But it doesn't really, it's not really important because every pianist can make up his own story. But let's analyze this first this first part A. Uh, <coughs> everything starts with the melody in the right hand, so we can suppose it's a woman, it's in the story, which is who is a little bit sad, but not but not terribly sad. It's it's more like missing something, it's longing. Melancholy, right? There are two statements, and then here we have... This is the question, right? Because the melody goes up. So, well, in Polish language, when we ask the question, we always raise the tone at the end. So just like here we have... And then, all of a sudden, the second person comes. question this person does it answer the question or not we had the question no it does not it it repeats the question so very interesting very mysterious right it's somebody alone 
answer and suddenly another person answered and uh, uh, asked this question again repeats the question of another person so we ca it's scary i think it's a little bit scary so maybe this is the ghost that at the end will disappear <coughs> and then another ghost join the first one and we have two together and then again the beginning nothing the same and then here it should be the question right but there is no question there is a, a surprise another person in the bass is coming interrupting this uh, this statement everything is played sotto voce and this is um, like something very far away maybe this is a person who died maybe somebody not real but in a way dancing obedek so the fastest dance polish folk dance We have well, we have four persons here in this ballad. The, the, and then the second time, right? Some drama, uh, some drama in the rhythm of Mazur. <laughs> Very funny, but it's not really funny. This is something really happening here. Here it's very important to do the the Mazur Mazurka rhythm. One two three, one two three. like a father you know old father who knows life is calm and something terrible happened but then the father in a few words can solve the situation calm everybody down and we come back to the beginning yes and here one of the secrets of playing this mazurka interpreting this mazurka is that every time when this melody comes we should change it even though it's written the same way when it's ballad when it's a story it always happens in time like in life so the same person older so a little later in the piece is not the same anymore because of everything what happened before so this person here it's not the same because what happened before changed that person, right? So we can play, for example, we can play it more sad. Listen. Set again. 
Amen. It's a fight between the part A, part B, part A, part B. A father, but this time smiling and the most beautiful part of this nocturno, of this mazurka, ex excuse me. So this trio that the student was talking about, the marvelous trio in B major. The key B major uh, was used by Chopin always when he wanted to express his love. For example, This is love. So here we know that Chopin was in love um, with George Sand, and he was very happy. And here, well, I personally can imagine Chopin probably he composed this mazurka when when they were living together somewhere, and when when you know she was working in one room, he was composing in another room, and suddenly he composed and he comes to her and he asks her to come, and he says to her sit down, I just composed the new melody and I want to know if you like it, I want to play it for you. And then maybe he tells her, this is, this is my love to her, so this is how I love you. And this, so here I think this is a challenge for the pianist to bring out from the inside the best part of ourselves, our sensitivity, our love, our heart, our, our good emotions, just this melody, just let us do it. Just listen. person only, again a man, continues to dance but very far away, so again it's like a, like a dream. And then the happy, the happy dance is changing for the sad, just listen to it. Of 
everything brings us to the beginning, which is almost not real. And again, we must play it in a different way, somehow. So, um, so all this, this trio about love is one of the most beautiful melodies Chopin wrote, in my opinion. Dolcissimo, sweet, very beautiful. Uh, the pianist has a lot of options doing the rubato. Um, has to improve the touch, different ways of touching the piano, and then this mazo rhythm, tam ta tam pa, tam ta tam pa. Always, this is very important to play the tree later. So, sorry. For example, like this, or with the longer pedal. Now I play for you a completely different. For me, it, this is unreal. It's almost like foggy. o'clock and the ghost disappears. And this is the end. So this mazurka, um, if it's played um, well by the pianist who has the story inside and can stop the time, can make us, can hypnotize us with the story and with the tension and then the feeling we have we have after listening to this mazurka we are just stunned we are left speechless because this is such a masterpiece um, but definitely the pianist needs a lot of inspiration before uh, before playing it uh, thank you very much for listening and i invite you for my next videos they will be next week we open the new opus, opus 41. Take care and all the best. Bye bye.